So, um, so there's been a couple of themes so far around the, the pay gap uh, and violence and sexual violence towards women. Um, Deborah and I work as a team, so Deborah is going to address the issues of violence towards women. I want to talk about the gender pay gap. And I did actually choose that specifically because it is an issue which is, is of specific re relevance to uh, my electorate of Palmerston North. The reason for that is health is, one of, is our largest source of employment in Palmerston North. The Defence Force is another major source of employment and retail is another source of employment. In all of those areas, we have very, very strong signs of the uh, pay gap between uh, men and women. Now, the pay gap may be the lowest in the OECD. I'm not too sure about that stat, but what I know is this. It's going up in New Zealand. It increased last year from 9.3% to 10.1%. That's what happens when you take your eye off the ball. That's what happens when you take a hands-off approach to these things and think that the market will provide the answer. The gaps get bigger every single time. So in health, for instance, it's not actually the issue that one, um, a nurse, uh, a female nurse working next to a male nurse is going to be earning less. It's that the female-dominated professions like caregiving are undervalued and underrated and underpaid. In the, Same goes for retail, another female dominated profession uh, where, the, where the wage rates are bottom basement, it's minimum wage all around in the retail sector. And in the Defence Force there we do actually see an internal uh, pay gap, the, um, the pay difference in the Ministry of Defence between men and women is a thumping 42%. And 21 out of 29 government agencies have a larger pay gap than the national average. This government is failing on the pay gap between men and women. So what do we need to do about it? Well, we need to actually make sure that those female-dominated professions are valued and we do get the pay up and actually recognise them as an important part of our community, our society and our economy. And as Labour's aged care spokesperson and as a former employee of the New Zealand Nurses Organisation, I have worked tirelessly to get a policy in place for pay parity for aged care and disability caregivers with their counterparts in the district health And we'll be more about that next week. Uh, but we also need to take a hands-on approach from government to addressing the issues of the gender pay gap. We can't leave it to the market. We can't take the hands-off approach because what's happening right now under that approach is an increasing gap and that simply isn't good enough. Right.